cup is much too full. But actually, I did it on purpose. And we're actually going to be adding more. Let's fill it to the brim. Perfect. Today we're going to be exploring a very fascinating phenomenon of liquid. And don't worry, I'm not experimenting with alternate methods of introducing caffeine into my bloodstream in the morning when I wake up. I much prefer to drink my coffee. The phenomenon that we're looking at today is what allows water striders to effortlessly walk on the surface of water. Water droplets from rain to bead on your windshield in the car. It's a phenomenon called cohesion. A water droplet will tend to maintain its round shape. And that's because all of those water molecules are drawn towards the center of the drop and they cohere to each other, they cling to one another. At the surface of the water droplet, there's nothing beyond the walls of that drop of water. So the bonds between those molecules there is especially strong, and it forms a sort of a skin on the surface of the water. Just as the bonds of water molecules in the form of surface tension are stronger on the surface of a droplet, the same is true for a body of liquid. This can be in the form of a pond, a puddle, or even water or coffee in a cup. Here's some videos from NASA in the space station, and you can really visualize that independent cohesion that's going on in these water droplets. Now we're working with one G here, gravity of course, so we can't produce those same effects. But what we can do is produce something arguably more interesting in its own way. This little syringe here I have filled with coffee, and what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be just producing these tiny little drops of coffee. And if you get it just right, something beautiful happens that we can't detect with our own eyes because it's happening way too fast. So we're gonna need some help. Now right here is a high-speed camera and it can see things that our eyes cannot see. The simple smartphone films anywhere from 30 frames per second to 60 frames per second. It's about the same frames per second that is detectable by the human eye. This thing films at up to 150,000 frames per second. So the more frames you have per second, the more you can slow down that video without it becoming choppy. It's still very smooth. And it's going to allow us to see this wonderful little phenomenon that many people don't know about. So this is my setup that I'm using. I got the high speed camera here with a very long lens, 300 millimeters. And I have a close up filter on the end of that lens. So I'm able to get a very close focal length here and the water droplets are backlit by this strong light here to the left so we can really illuminate the edges of the water droplet and if we look over here we can see the screen of the high-speed camera so as i drop these droplets in like this this is what the camera is seeing So all the setup work is done. At this point, all you really need to do is produce a sufficient droplet of coffee. So let's see what we can do here. Uh... Ooh, that was a good one. That was a good one. That's exactly what I wanted to show you guys. Check it out. Ever since learning about this phenomenon, I've been so curious as to why and how it happens. And it turns out that in addition to that skin, that layer at the surface of the droplet and the body of liquid we're dropping those droplets into, researchers have figured out that there is a small, thin layer of air underneath those drops in between the droplets and the body of liquid that they're falling into. It takes a few microseconds for that layer of air to be squeezed out. And once it finally is, on one tiny point at the molecular level, 
cohesion is able to occur and then it spreads like wildfire it's a chain reaction and that droplet can morph into the body of liquid that it's falling into the researchers were able to confirm that cushion of air theory by conducting the droplet experiment in a vacuum chamber no air present sure enough as soon as those droplets fell in they cohered right away no delay no sitting on top of the surface for a small period of time now, even with today's high-speed camera setup, we are unable to see that little cushion of air. It's just not feasible. But here, in this lava lamp, we can. In a lava lamp, the same exact physics are going on. Just as it's a layer of air that's in between the droplets of coffee in our first experiment, it's a layer of oil, the clear liquid in this lava lamp. We can actually see that little layer in between the two droplets of wax. Let's take a look. It isn't until that layer of oil is squeezed out that cohesion is able to take place between the two droplets of wax. This occurs either by one smacking into the other in just the right way, or by the force of gravity as it settles to the bottom of the lamp. So we've seen what happens when we drop droplets from close distance. But what about if we raise it up to about this high? and have the droplets strike the surface at a little bit higher velocity. This is going to produce something that is my favorite when it comes to droplet experimentation. It's a phenomenon called a coalescence cascade. And basically that's just a fancy way of saying that as soon as that droplet comes to rest on the surface, it'll sit there momentarily and half of that droplet coalesces and is absorbed into the rest of the water. But half of it will break off, be projected into the air, It'll come to rest, and it'll just keep going through that same process until it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And this is actually the whole reason that I made this entire video, because I was so fascinated with this phenomenon. This is the phenomenon happening in real time. You can barely see it. You can see something strange going on. It just looks like a drop of water is shrinking. But here's what's actually going on at 2,000 frames per second. So we're gonna do something now that I think is gonna look pretty neat. We're gonna take two syringes like this filled with coffee and we're going to fire tiny droplets at each other so they're going to be colliding head on. Mm-hmm, record, yeah, here we go. Let's see how that looks. So the idea was to get these droplets to just skip across the surface of the coffee. And I'm pretty happy with the results. The depth of field when you have a 300 millimeter lens is just, it's so shallow that it's hard to keep all of the droplets in focus. But it's about the best I can do with just doing this myself. It's fun to just pick one droplet. You can see that one flinging across right now, tumbling end over end. It's fun to pick one though and just see See where it ends up and what it collides into. Okay, so the last thing that I really want to do in this video is take two of these syringes, hold them up in the air, and just launch those tiny little balls of water directly at each other. I think it's going to be an interesting effect. Let's do it. This is really neat because we can see those droplets colliding head on with other droplets. Some of them bounce off of one another and others, they're traveling at a velocity where they can break that surface tension and just morph into one giant glob of water. 
I want to give a special thank you to Cliff from IX Cameras, who has been helping me through the calibration process of this camera. Um, this footage was shot in this video before I calibrated the camera, so that's why you see the nasty lines across the image sensor, but the camera is working much better now. So thank you to Cliff for, for helping me set up my high-speed camera. If you guys enjoy this type of stuff, uh, please do reach down, hit the subscribe button because I'm going to be doing a lot more experimentation with this camera and I think you guys are going to enjoy it. So thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.